Hello and welcome to the Limitless Landscapers podcast. I'm Paula, as always your host, and today is part two of the bizarre world of landscaping and particularly we're going to be talking about sales and marketing to this week's episode of the Limitless Landscapers podcast. As the founder of the Landscaper Circle and the Limitless Landscapers podcast, I am here to help you get more money, time and freedom to make your life and business truly limitless. Through my experiences as the owner of a garden design and landscaping business and through tried and tested methods, if you want help with the marketing, managing and growing of your business, then you are in the right place. If you are a landscaper, garden designer, horticultural business or a supplier to the industry, be sure to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Now, let's get back to the show. So, how are you? Did you enjoy last week's podcast on the bizarre world of landscaping part one? I did get a message from my in-house designer who gave me another idea for this one, part two, that I'd forgotten in my haste to record part one. But it was just meant to be a bit of fun And also, hopefully, you can relate to a lot of the things that I spoke about on part one. And again, when I do this part two, hopefully it resonates with you guys. It would be great if you could leave us a review or send me in your thoughts, just message us via email. It would be fantastic. But this week, I wanted to cover part two, which is all about sales and marketing. Now, I speak to a lot of landscapers and garden designers who contact me to help them with their business. Now that could be helping with marketing, helping with sales, helping with business growth, just someone to chat to and go through strategy with. It's all of those things. And a lot of the reasons why they come to me rather than another marketing agency is that they say, we, I get the industry as TLC. That's the purpose of it being set up. And They're right because unfortunately, as a strange phenomenon that the landscaping industry is, it's not one size fits all when it comes to sales and marketing methods. And I've done a lot of, I've worked in a lot of sales and marketing jobs. I've done a lot of trainings on this um, years gone by. And some of the stuff that people try and get you to use, maybe the way you promote your business and stuff like this, it doesn't necessarily work for us as people in the industry. And, you know, that's what I'm going to go through today because it is bizarre because generally if you go on a sales course or a marketing course or do the qualifications, essentially what you learn could and then should in theory be applied to any business. And part of me agrees with that. Don't get me wrong. It can be applied to the business, but there's a few, few things that you have to be more aware of and things that I would definitely not use in my landscaping business, but I would potentially use it if say I ran a different business such as, I don't know, a gym or a cafe or something. So it's just, this is what the purpose is of part two. And hopefully you'll be able to get something out of it um, and have some things confirmed to you in your mind if you think the same as me. So there's four areas I want to go through. I'm going to start with the first one, which is the one that my designer brought up, which I can't believe I forgot it in part one, because it's probably the biggest bugbear of mine in the industry. And that is the bizarre thing that clients want you to break down your quotes. And what I mean, break down your quotes, I'm not saying, you know, they might want it sectioned out into separate areas. So oh, I would like my garden quoted for but I want a decking area a patio area wildflower turf whatever it might be and can I have the cost split out for each area because we can't afford it all at one go fine what I'm talking about is the fact that they you know some not all want you to break it down in terms of cost for labor and materials so essentially they want to see how much money you're truly making they want to see if they can get the materials cheaper and essentially they make the job really not worth my time and effort And I just want you to think about this because some people do break down their quotes and that's your choice, but I'm never going to do it. If they want to go with my landscaping and design company, then they go as a full project basis. And I'm not about to tell them how much I spend on labor versus materials and everything in between. So it's it's an outright no from me. It might be that you don't mind doing that and that's absolutely fine. But just think to yourself, in what other industry do you go in and ask for the labor cost 
of something versus the, um, <clears throat> the material cost. And I'm not saying like when you have a kitchen fitted, you ask for the labor, you know, you get an installation cost and you get a kitchen cost, that's fine. But when it comes to landscaping, people just want to know the ins and outs. So if you start saying the materials cost me X and the labor cost me Y, and they're like, there's, there's a gap. Yeah, that's called profit and everything else in between. And I just, I just hate it. I mean, the des my designer said to me, would you go into Tesco's and take a product off the shelf and say, well, can you split that out into labor versus product cost, please? Because I need to know what it's made up of. It's just thinking of it in that respect. You know, I understand people want to get an idea, but when they're asking for you to break down the quotes, the only reason they're asking for this, so they can basically drill you down on price. And that's no way to run a business, in my opinion. So number two is offers. So I've been to many events for business owners and I've also signed up to various marketing help, you know, forums for business owners to discuss. And a lot of the time they really push the fact of using offers. So for instance, buy now and get a hundred pound off or buy now and get 20% off the recommended retail price, etc. That's what I mean by offers. Now, the reason why I think it doesn't work in our industry, and again, you may disagree with me on this, and I'd love to hear from you if you do. Personally, if you take 10% off a project that you're doing, and it, it, say if it's 100K, that's 10 grand. That's an extreme reduction in a project, and also a large slice of your profit. If you have to basically use offers to get clients in, I feel like it devalues your service because it means, well, for me as a client, I would be wondering why you have to give a discount to get people in the door when others are so busy. So that's another reason I think it really does devalue that service that we provide and, and we are very knowledgeable as well. So it devalues everything. And I also think it attracts the wrong clients. If you're going to be putting offers out, like get 10% off or get a free quote or get this, that, and the other that ultimately devalues your service. You're going to get poorer quality clients and they're going to be the people that don't want to pay the money that you're worth. They will try and negotiate on price. And will they be good payers? That's questionable. So that's a reason why I don't think offers can be applied. And I used to be part of a membership where they used to send you emails and stuff with templates that you could use in your business. And this is going back a good 10 years now. And it would always be offer based. So they would encourage you to offer something to entice someone to buy from you. And I just couldn't do it. I, I was like, it does not apply to this industry. It's such a high value item that we're selling. We're selling a dream lifestyle. We're selling, you know, a quality product and service. There's no way I could reduce the money. I mean, it's different. If you were selling um, slabs, for instance, if you sold slabs wholesale or sold garden furniture, yes, you could potentially use an offer like that to get them to buy first time or give them incentive to be return buyers. But when it comes to actually landscape servicing and garden design services, I don't think you can. And I, I just wouldn't recommend it myself. Number three is using certain social media platforms. Now, I've always been a big fan of consistency. You would have heard that all over TLC and the podcast for, you know, forever. And I'm all about being consistent on one platform first and then potentially going into other platforms that work for you. Now, the main key element of social media is, yes, it's free, but yes, you do have to spend a bit of time on it. And yes, it's great to build your brand awareness and it's great to get in front of potential clients, but only if the potential clients you're looking for are on there. So I would personally argue that some high value clients are not going to be on certain social platforms. Um, one of the platforms that I try not to use much in my landscape business is Facebook. I do not believe there are quality clients there. They're always the ones that want a cheap job um, or one man band. So that's probably the best place that they could be on and TikTok people go mad like creating TikTok videos and stuff like that and I'm like if that's your thing that's fantastic but you've got to ask yourself is your ideal client is your high value high net worth client on TikTok and even if they are on any of these platforms 
do you really think they're going to choose your landscaping company over another landscaping company just because you're on TikTok? I would argue no. I would argue that potentially you might look, I don't know, not as serious um, a business if you're doing silly TikToks, for instance. If you're doing like high, high end, high quality ones, maybe, maybe not. But it's just questionable. And I think with all social platforms, it's working out where you get the most most for the time spent because obviously it doesn't cost anything to post on there but is it just to gain inquiries is it just to get your brand awareness out there for myself I use it as a brand awareness tool only and I don't really expect many clients coming from Instagram or anywhere else I would also just think about it as a landscaper as a reputable serious business owner where you would like where you would want to be seen and how you would want to be seen so that's why i flagged this because kind of like some people love tiktok facebook i'm not one of those people and you know that's fine it do what feels right for you but it's kind of thinking where could you get more inquiries more quality leads on what platform doing what type of content so um it's just something to think about and i'm not against by the way you doing fun funny you know entertaining or what they call edutainment videos and posts I think it's just about where would you consistently like to put your attention and focus in order to get the better clients and better results and really seriously think about it as a landscaping business owner not as just something fun to do and my last one is when people use time constraints to push a buying decision now we've all heard I mean we've just done it we've closed the doors on TLC and there was an actual end date so that's kind of like you have to buy before then otherwise you can't get in now what I did learn again from the same same membership I was part of um 10 years ago was that they would push you to say offer ends in seven days or this expires in 14 days etc and I just felt that it did not sit right with me in the in the industry we're in to push a buying decision from a client that's spending 20 30 50 60 70 80 90 thousand pounds on a project it's a huge what i want to make you aware of is it's a huge huge investment for people um their outdoor space is important to them it's a huge investment therefore it's a massive buying decision and you can't push someone into doing that by putting a time constraint on your offer we yes i'm not saying you don't put a time constraint on your quotes because we have to especially now with prices going up but it's not to say that they can't buy they just have to have a requote what i'm saying is when people are pushing and pushing and pushing like um to, to get them to buy in a very short period and over the years i've i've looked at this reviewed the business multiple times you know looking at the marketing and you know buying decisions can take up to three to four months if not longer so to use a time constraint to push a buying decision i, I don't think works in our industry uh, i think that's an absolute no-no yet it works in many others and most others um so yeah that's another one so i don't think i don't like pushing people into a buying decision anyway particularly when they are spending a lot of money you want them to feel happy safe secure and that they're making the correct decision with you and that takes time you've got to build a rapport you've got to really get to know your client and you've got to deliver what they want you to deliver on and and at the moment there's obviously time delays on providing quotes and, and getting out to see people so i just think that definitely does not work in in the landscape and industry so that was my four things i don't know what you think on them definitely number one is my massivest bugbear of the industry and yeah i hope you've enjoyed this two-part podcast i've enjoyed ranting for the two episodes if you've got any questions or want to give any feedback do email us info at the landscapercircle.co.uk go follow us on instagram facebook we're everywhere <laughs> and not tiktok and also if you've got any burning questions just drop me a dm or I'll, I'll get back to you and if you could leave a review for this podcast uh i want to get it out to more and more people in the industry um and by leaving a review you help me do that so that's all i ask and i will be back next week with something completely different leaving the bizarre world of landscaping behind 
Thanks, guys. See you soon.